one of the things that I that, that Daryl and I have talked about and, and that we've tried to think through is if, if CRT is such a wonderful thing, if CRT, if critical race theory is such a wonderful thing, and again, a, a lot of this is assumption, the assumptions that we're making, because normally we spend the time unpacking what critical race theory is. We have a whole episode where we talked about, we, we looked at critical and what that meant. We explained it, what, what, what race is and biblically, and we've done that and theory and what's meant by that. So, so we're, we're assuming, we're using this language, assuming that you all kind of understand the terminology around what we're talking about. But, but when you look at, at critical race theory, I, I, I wanted to go back through the lens of time and, and say, where, show me a culture where this theory has been utilized to the degree that it's created the level of success that those who advocate for it say that it provides. When in actuality, when you look everywhere where it's been tried or used, it's created more destruction. And so I don't know why they think that the cereal is going to taste any better passed over to the next denomination, but it's not. It's, it's, actually, it's actually something that's going to destroy. So that was the, those are kind of the two analogies from that particular uh, episode that we, that we tried to leverage in that. You know, Verge, as I listen to you there, I'm just reminded of uh, Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones. Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones was preaching against this very same thing back in the 50s over in the UK. So what does Ecclesiastes teach us, right? Ecclesiastes teaches us that there's nothing new under the sun. sun. Right. Mm-hmm. Critical race theory is not new. Now, in Martin Lloyd-Jones' days, they weren't using the term critical race theory, but Lloyd-Jones was preaching against the social gospel. Mm -hmm. The critical race theory is just another layer of the social gospel. Now, as we talk about critical race theory, and for those of you who have listened to that episode, you know that in that episode, we do what we normally do. We basically start off by defining terms. Uh, The Just Thinking Podcast has gained a reputation for that, that we we don't just dive in feet first uh, into an issue. We take the time to define the terms because as we said many, many times, um, words have meaning. Mm -hmm. And unless you define the terms, you define, you get the context of the conversation by defining the terms. So when someone comes to you and they say, well, they won't have a, they'll they'll say to you, well, well, okay, I believe in justice. Well, first of all, you have to be able to push back and, well, okay, what do you mean by justice? Right. What do you mean? Now, as a Christian, when you look at the word justice in scripture, I don't care whether it's in the Greek or the Hebrew, when you look at that word, it always ties back to the righteousness of God. Absolutely. It is never a human That's construct. Right. Mm-hmm. Never. Especially in the Hebrew. You look at justice biblically, and it ties to God's character. It t- literally, it ties to his righteousness. It literally means righteousness. Mm-hmm. So justice for the Christian means to do right according to God's righteousness. It has nothing to do with outcome. Mm. Nothing to do with equity of outcome. See, see, and again, this is what you have to understand. There is a distinction to be made between equity and equality. Equity is 1 Kings chapter 3, where Solomon has to adjudicate the situation between these two women who both claimed that the baby was theirs. Solomon knew that his first allegiance was to judge righteously. Okay. Meaning, why well, do you need to investigate what the truth is here? Mm-hmm. We have one baby, two, mo- two women claiming to be mothers of the child. Now, equality would have been the so- for Solomon to carry through with what he threatened to do when he requ- asked for that sword. He says, well, bring me a sword. Mm-hmm. See, equality would have been Solomon cutting the baby in two, giving each woman half a dead baby. Mm-hmm. That's equality. <laughs> equity is judging in truth according to what God's worth is. The equal, I, I define equity this way. Equity is the equal, uh, uh, impartial application of God's law to every person, regardless of outcome. Solomon knew that one of those women was going to go home without a baby. Now, if he had judged on the basis of equality, truth wouldn't have mattered to him. He would have just said, bring this Lord. Okay, you take the bottom half of the baby, you take the upper half of the baby. That's equality. Yep. Both of you guys have half a baby. Yes, the baby's dead, but you've got half a baby. Equity was, was Solomon's priority. And the, pro- the, pro- the problem right now in the culture, and I want you to understand this, is as, even as you define terms, even as you define terminology, equity, equality, w- what's happening right now in the culture is they're using these words in, I mean, it's almost like a shell game. 
You guys know a shell game where, you, where you've got you, there's there's a there's a good no 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 no, no, no. There's a, there's they, a good, they, these are good reform people they don't play shell oh, games. <laughs> they, they don't gamble oh that's right bro they my, don't gamble my bad <laughs> y'all pray for me later <laughs> y'all, come on come I, on I, man. I gotta fix it yeah these, these, Go these guys read Calvin they don't play my craps bad. my bad <laughs> where 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 they're where they're, mo- where they're moving the thing around not knowing where so so one moment you're gonna hear language like uh uh. Health equity. Mm-hmm. And you go, oh, who's not for that? Right? But what they mean is equity of outcome. Right. Right? And then you're going to hear, you're gonna hear uh, things about, about economic equality. And what they're going to mean is equity of outcome. And, and, and none of us, listen, the, the, I, it would be one, what, what we have to do, but what's important to the believer is that we have to get back to biblical terminologies. Because once we leave the pages of scripture and we begin embracing the language of culture, we're in trouble. So it's imperative that when you, when you define equity, when you define equality, you open your Bible and understand that always when we're talking about, about equality, we're talking about equal in the eyes of God on the basis of the fact that Genesis 127 says that we're created in his image and likeness. And as a result, all of us have distinct value, dignity, and worth. That's equality. Now, from there, equity of outcome, you won't find that in Scripture. That's not what takes place as a result. And so we've got to think about these things from a standpoint of having biblical language about the issues that we're addressing. You know, one example that I like to use from Scripture, because that's what we do on the Just Thinking Podcast, we turn pages. We right? turn in pages. <laughs> we turn pages. So... Uh, one of the great examples of what Virgil was talking about, the, the, the distinction between, and I, and I love what Dr. Burke Parsons was saying today. Uh, Dr. Parsons, if you're within the sound of my voice, I just want to say uh, what, what an awesome job you did today speaking to the uh, heresy that is the social gospel, the social justice of movement. Thank you for that. But one example that I like to take from scripture to help make that distinction is in uh, Matthew chapter 11, where we have uh, the imprisonment of John the Baptist. Now, no one would argue that John the Baptist was imprisoned unjustly. Would everyone agree with that? He was imprisoned unjustly. Um, you know, Herod's wife influenced Herod to have him jailed mm-hmm. because John had spoken the truth about Herod's adulterous relationship with his brother's wife. Herod is imprisoned unjustly. Unjustly. Yeah, we John, agree on that. John's in prison. Unjustly. John's in prison. John's in prison. Yeah. Well, I wish it was Herod, but John, 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 <laughs> John the Baptist is in prison unjustly. Right. Now, while John the Baptist is in prison, he sends two of his disciples to Jesus to ask him, ask Jesus, are you the, this is Matthew 11, ask Jesus, are you the expected one are we to, or, or are we to wait for another? Right. Let me just read this passage real quick from Matthew 11. Jesus responds, right? He says, go back to John. This is Matthew chapter 11, verse two. Now, when John, while in prison, heard of the works of Christ, he sent word by his disciples and said unto him, are you the expected one or shall we look for someone else? Jesus answered and said to them, go and report to John what you hear and see. Mm -hmm. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear, the dead are raised and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Now, social justice Jesus would have said this. (laughs) I just quoted you from the biblical Jesus. Right. (laughs) Social justice Jesus would have said this. No, go back to John and tell John, that the poor all, re- all have houses, they, they all have homes to live in, they all have jobs. All the poor students have had their student loan debt uh, mm-hmm. wiped out. Uh, every, everyone uh, has, a, no, one's, no one's salary is higher than the other person. Everyone makes the same amount of money. The, the hourly McDonald's worker, the, the CEO of McDonald's now makes the same wage as the hourly McDonald's worker. <laughs> uh, so so that's, that's, that's equality. Right. Mm. That's equality. CRT Jesus would have told him to let go of that whiteness. <laughs> that's another conversation. That's another, another, that's another episode. Yeah.